Good afternoon, ladies. Uh, I'd like to welcome all of you to this great meeting that we're having here in this room. I think the room is great. It's set up beautifully. Tom and Jim have done a great job and everybody that helped him. Uh, before I start the meeting, I just want everybody to know, I'm sure you know my name. I'm Jenny Menton. I'm the vice chair. Uh, Rosemary Panio is not here today. Unfortunately, her husband had emergency surgery. He is doing fine. They are taking a CAT scan of it today, and if all goes well, he will be home on Saturday. If she wants to go into more detail, she'll let you know at the next meeting, but so far everything is going great. So if we'll all just take a minute and stand up so we could say the pledge, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I'd like us all... I'd like us all to take a moment of silence and in your own way pray for everything that's going on in this world today. I'm sure everyone knows what's going on. So in your own way, if you'll just take a few minutes and pray for all these people. I thank you. Okay, thank you. Again, I want to thank the, uh, to our sponsors, the New York Presbyterian Hudson Valley Hospital. The lunch is absolutely delicious today. We have a bag lunch every week, every month. It seems to be a little different. Right now, I would just like to introduce the members of our board with a little blurb that they might want to say. I'm Daryl Lindholm. I'm recording secretary. Barbara Leifel, board member. I'm Jenny Minton, vice chair. I'm Maria Fama. Okay, ladies. Um, I just have to say one thing that I don't even have on the agenda. Yesterday, Maria Fama and myself were very fortunate to be invited to the St. Patrick's Luncheon here at the Nutrition Center by Noreen. And it was really the first time we've been there to see what a beautiful, beautiful job they did and, and all the dancers that we had. and. I can't tell you how I really, re we really enjoyed it. We really did. And um, the food, the food was delicious. Noreen is a great dancer. So are these lovely ladies here. They're great dancers also. And this one over here, she won the 50-50. 50-50. And I was very good because when they left, her husband gave me the tickets and say, here, Jenny. I said, well, I'll, what? no, no, don't worry about it. Just take it. And I gave her, I gave her the whole $108 today. So she was very, very fortunate. <laughs> Again, I don't know how many of you were here last month, but we've had the honor of having um, Chief Robert Noble here. Were many of you here last month? Yes. And he gave a wonderful, wonderful presentation on the fraud that's going on, not only in Yorktown, but throughout the country. And unfortunately, the seniors are the target. And I don't want to repeat everything he said, but if you watch it on TV, we are on the TV channel. Uh, he gave us a lot of good hints. I know a few people that have been scammed. One of the big things he said to us was, please do not put your mail that you are going to have delivered in your mailbox. Take a moment to drop it down at the post office. I'm a little bit lazy, so what I do is I get in my car, and Town Hall has a beautiful mailbox right there that you don't have to get out of the car. You can drive right up, and I put my mail there because I'm lazy. I don't want to park the car. I get out of the car, and I go down. And I admit it. I admit it. I'm lazy. You know, so that's what I do. One of my neighbors was scammed. What they do is they take the envelope, especially if you have your red flag up, they take the envelopes out, and... They, I don't, the word is they wash the check. They wash the check and they redo it. And you don't know about it until it's gone through your checking account. It took them months to get it squared away. 
the writing comes off and you wash it? Well, not just regularly wash. They do it. That's the they terminology the that they use. They use a certain mixture that they wash it. And the uh, and the big other big thing is, I mean, he they have it on the telecom that's outside the police office, the police station. Please lock your cars. And if you don't lock your cars, don't leave your keys inside. <laughs> Because you make it really easy for them to, because by time you get up in the morning and you notice your car is gone, it's already been sold and parts taken out and the car is gone. So, but uh, I really, really feel that if you do have a TV and you put, I know with me it's channel 20. I know the other one, I don't know what the other channel is. Uh, I'm channel 20 that I can look at the meeting on television and relive what has been said there. Okay? Um, I'm going to ask, um, I know um, our supervisor wanted to get on first, but he's not here. So, uh, Daryl, can I ask you to get up and speak about what we spoke about at the executive okay. board? Daryl has a lot of information for caregivers that are at home taking care of your husband or your wife or your children. And caregivers really need a lot of help also. So I'm going to ask Daryl if she'll... Take a moment and tell us about that. Yes, I'm involved in a program uh, through the County of Westchester Family Services, um, and I'm called a coach. And what the coach does is to call somebody who is a caregiver. Um, I know I'm just now going through, my husband had a heart attack. Um, it takes a lot out of you when you are taking care of a sick person. And sometimes you just need somebody to talk to. Coaches don't solve any problems. We're not professional, but we listen and we empathize and we may say, well, you know, this worked for me, might work for you. Um, and it's all through the County of Westchester. The um, person to call if you're interested, um, I'm doing this especially because it's on being taped, um, Colette Phipps of the County of Westchester, and her number is... Um, I knew I wrote it down, 914-813-6441. Um, and she can um, talk to you and get a coach for you if you're needed. Now, County of Westchester also has many services that I think we should avail ourselves of. We all pay county tax, um, and we have the highest tax rate in the I guess the world and the state, I mean country. <laughs> let's bring it down, Daryl, um, in the country. And um, so let's, you know, it's there. We're paying for it. Let's take advantage of it. Um, you can also go on the website, County of Westchester, and find out the many things that are available for you. Okay, thanks, Daryl. Uh, I want to make another announcement. I'm going to get all these little announcements in because our supervisor had asked to be placed earlier on the agenda, so I'm waiting for him to come in because he has another meeting. On the bottom of your agenda, you notice that next meeting would be Good Friday, and we would not have a meeting on Good Friday, so we will have it the following Friday, which would be the 22nd, and it will be at Town Hall. We're trying to stay at Town Hall as often as we can. Unfortunately, we could not be there today because the auditors are there, and they take preference off of us, over us, which I understand. So we will be back there unless something else comes up. So put that on your calendar that um, we'll be back at Town Hall. And um, oh, I'm going to call on Yvonne Check then. He's not here right Did now. You? Is he here? Did he come in? Yvonne, right here? No, no, no. I'm looking, listen, oh. looking for Matt Slater. Our oh, oh, no. He had asked me to put him up earlier I on know. the agenda. Okay, so either one of you, whichever one wants to come up first. I'll get started. Thank and, you so much. And your name? Yvonne Check. Yvonne Check. She's from um, uh, the J.C. Hart Library, and she has some great news to talk to us about. Thank you, Yvonne. Great. Thank you so much. So as the vice chair said, I am, my name is Yvonne Check. And I'm the director of the John C. Hart Memorial Library. With me today also is our head of adult services, Ellen Tannenbaum. So she's going to.
give a few comments as well, um, and and uh, we'll between the two of us, we'll give you a good overview of the services that we offer. Uh, I also want to echo the comments that uh, Vice Chair Grasso was making that Chief Noble mentioned about the scams and the check washing. I actually had that happen to me three weeks ago. Oh, wow. I wrote a check to a charity, which, of course, everyone does, for $30, put it in the mail. It never got to the charity. It got intercepted. They did that check washing procedure, and they made it out for multiple thousands of dollars, and they were able to cash it. And we found out after the fact. Wow. And so we've been working with the police on recovering that. So it really does happen. And so please be careful. Oh I like the idea God. of taking the, the envelope directly to the post office. I think that is really mm -hmm. important. So just really, be, it's not, it, it really does happen. I, I'm, the I'm, red flag is what tells them that you have something in there. So. Yeah, so just be careful about that. But we're here today to talk about some happy things. <laughs> so uh, you, you will have received one of these packets, and that is for us to, uh, because there's not a projector or anything, we'll just sort of walk you through our presentation. Uh, I want to thank Rosemary Panio for inviting us today to speak with you, and I also want to thank Supervisor Slater for connecting us and he's he is great at connecting uh, yes, people yes. in in town and i'm happy that he did i took a look at the mission for the senior advisory committee and i actually see a great deal of alignment between the mission for this group and the library because we too have as our mission to have a positive impact on the town of yorktown through our resources and our services and we have a strong focus on services and resources, especially for seniors and older adults. So we are here today to talk about some of the library programs and services that are of specific interest to all of you. And I'll start off by saying, how many of you have used the library in the past year? Wow. Excellent. That's great. I don't know if the camera's getting this, but almost every hand went up, so I love that. <laughs> Uh, okay, so whether you use the library facility in person or whether you use our website, we are here to serve you in a number of ways. So I'm going to start off by telling you some statistics. I see that Supervisor Slater has come in, so do you, do you want to? We can continue. Yes. Okay. Thank Great. you. So I'll, I'll just start off by telling you a couple of really important things that you should know about the library and our services. We have about a quarter of a million, about 270,000 items that we lend out to the community. So that's a combination of traditional books and electronic resources or ebooks and all the other things like DVDs and uh, CD audiobooks. So that's a lot of items that are at your fingertips. We also, of course, are connected to the Westchester Library System, and so we have multiple uh, hundreds of thousands of items available to you uh, by uh, this this consortium where we all share our resources. So if we're, there's a book that you want and we don't have it, many of you may know that you can put it on hold from another library and they physically deliver the books to us on a daily basis. And we share our resources throughout the community or throughout the county that way. So that is really important. We have about 200,000 people walking through the library doors every year. Wow. That is a pretty big service to the community. And in this past year, during the pandemic in 2021, we had 100,000 people walk through the door and we were closed for almost six months. So that's really showing you that this is a well-used service in town. And when you consider, again, that it was a pandemic and multiple closures and people were reluctant to go inside places, I think they made it a priority to come to the library. So that tells you a lot. And uh, some of you may know that there are about 37,000 residents in the town mm -hmm. of Yorktown. Mm -hmm. So that's according to the 2020 sur uh, census. We serve, the John C. Hart Library serves every single one of those residents no matter what age. We are one of the few town resources that serves every single 
part of the population. You can be a newborn and come in and take advantage of some of our baby lap sit programs. You can be uh, uh, 10 years old and have a number of resources available in our children's department. We have young adult services, we have adult services, we have older adult services. Every age is served in this community by the library. And in addition to that, there are about 10,000 residents of the town of Cortland that are actually assigned to us. And that's because the town of Cortland doesn't have their own library. So the four neighboring towns divide up the population and the town of Cortland gives us a stipend to cover the, the cost of that. And so we in total serve 47,000 people in, our, in the John C. Hart Library. So I th just think that is a really good thing for people to understand about um, all the things that we provide for the community. About half of the residents of the town of Yorktown actually have a library card. That's a pretty good percentage. So 50% of the town residents, all ages, uh, there's 50% of you, about 18,500 people have library cards. And we circulate or lend about 247,000 items a year. So about quarter of a million items a year get lent out of our library. So that's just some basic stats about our library and we wanna talk a little bit more specifically about what we offer that might be of interest to you. So if you look at your handout, this is your cover page. If you turn to the first page, it looks like this and you'll see two slides. And the first thing that I want to talk about is some of our electronic resources. It's getting easier and easier these days to, uh, to, have, to take advantage of electronic resources. It's getting easier to download your, your e-books or your e-audiobooks to either your computer or your iPad or tablet or your smartphone. We have a, a brand new, well not new, but new-ish app called Libby. The library app, this is what the icon looks like. And you can download this for free and it turns your cell phone, if you have a smartphone or your tablet, into an e-reader device essentially. Wow. And you can download uh, thousands and thousands of books and read them right there instantly. So it's a free app again and this is available to anyone uh, and when you open it, when you, when you register for it, all you do is download the app and you tell it, you search for the John C. Hart Library and it's in the system and you click on it and put in your library card number and that's all you have to do and then you have Amazing. access to all Amazing. these services. It's really quite incredible. Oh, that's great. Go buy Kindle and Nook. <laughs> so we also have magazines in on that same app. So if you're if you're thinking that you want to maybe look at a fun recipe or you want to take a look at some uh, nature magazines or gardening, you in the same app you can look at those magazines instantly, or you can of course come oh, into the library and we have hundreds of magazines for you to choose from. If you turn to page two of your handout. We, we talk a lot on, this, uh, on these slides about our streaming services. Does anybody here have Netflix or Hulu mm -hmm. at home? Yes. So those are streaming services. You pay a monthly fee for those and you get your movies or your TV shows. Mm -hmm. We have the same kind of service oh, available you to you through the library for free. It's called Hoopla. And you can go onto our website and you can, or again on the Libby app, and you can, uh, using that service, that streaming service, you can look at TV shows, some movies, some e-books, e-audiobooks through the Hoopla app. It's our version of Netflix. Mm. So that's, again, another thing that your library provides to you. That's pretty good. Yeah. So if all of those apps sound a little bit confusing to you, we can also help you with that. <laughs> On Friday afternoons, we have uh, teen volunteers who come in every Friday from 2.30 to 4.30. And they are there with the specific purpose of providing one-on-one -on -one tech help. You can literally walk in with your tablet <coughs> or your laptop or your phone and go up to these teen volunteers and say, can you help me find the Libby app? 
and they'll help you. We also have people, of course, of course, available at our reference desk that can help you as well. Uh, the teens volunteer for us every week and are there to help people figure out how to download an ebook or you have a problem with your phone. It's really easy. These, you know, the kids are just you just hand it to them, tell them your problem, and in two seconds they have it fixed. So they are there free of charge every Friday afternoon. It's great. We also have drop-in programs. We just restarted them now, and so if you're looking for somebody to play Mahjong with or Scrabble or Backgammon, uh, or if you like to do needlework, we have several drop-in programs throughout the week, and you just come in, and maybe you don't have anybody available, but you just feel like, you feel like playing a game. You can walk in, then there's no registration needed, and there'll be people there who will just invite you in and, and you can just play a game of Mahjong or Scrabble or whatever you like. And some people we know are homebound. So there's a lot of people that want to get to the library and can't get there. So we have a program called Heart to the Homebound. And we literally bring library resources to your home. All you have to do if you need that service or if you know someone who needs that service is call the library and we'll set you up with that. And of course, we are first and foremost a library, so we have old-fashioned book clubs. So we have regular book clubs. If you look at the next page of your handout, you will see that we have four ongoing book clubs. And they meet, uh, they, they, each one meets a different time, and they meet monthly. Anyone is welcome to join. You do not have to be a member of this club in order to join. You can just take a look at which book they're reading, and if it's of interest to you, you can just read the book and show up at the book club. So that's another great resource that we offer. Um, the last thing that I want to talk about, which is on the bottom of that, that page, is, is our Museum Pass program. Many people don't know that we offer this. But the library, all, all libraries, partner with museums to get special memberships where we buy a membership, a library membership to museums, and then we lend out museum passes to the community. And what that gives you is a free or reduced entrance to many museums, including ones in New York City. Wow. This is a really great service. And a lot of people have saved a lot of money by doing this. So you get the pass for three days. You can either call or come in. And you pick up the pass on day one. You go to the museum on day two. And you return it on day three. Wow. So it's, it's really a great program. I'm now going to turn it over to Ellen Tannenbaum for her to tell you about some special programs that she has coming up. Could okay. we? Could Did you want to? Do you want to? Could we have slot in? Supervisor Slater? Yeah, absolutely. Come, um, Uh, I'd like to introduce Matthew Slater, our Yorktown supervisor, who really needs no introduction to give us an update on what's going on in town. And uh, I want to thank you very, very much, but I think after our supervisor speaks and you speak, then we'll have a question and answer period. And okay. anybody that has a question, we will either you will come up to the podium and because you need to come up to the podium to ask your question because the people at home cannot hear the question on the TV. So, Matthew Slater, you're on. Thank you. Good afternoon, everybody, and let's give it uh, another round of applause for Yvonne, please. She is fantastic. We are so lucky to have her. She's doing such great things in the library, and our library staff are really providing some incredible services and new services to our community, which we're very, very excited about. So keep up the good work, please. Uh, I do want to uh, just send well wishes to Rosemary and Rock Rocco Panio. I uh, hope he's doing well. We keep them in our thoughts and prayers. Uh, I also see that um, uh, we have Ann Kaufman here with us. Annie, it's great to see you. It's been a while since I've seen you. Hello. So great to have her back. Uh, but it's an exciting time in the town. It's a beautiful day outside, 70 degrees, and people are starting to get back outside. And that's, and that's a, a great thing for the community, a great thing for our seniors. Our programs are back up and running. Uh, Jim Moderano from our Parks and Rec Department, our, he's our Parks and Rec Superintendent, have our programs all back to the way they were pre-COVID. And uh, we're very excited to be here uh, and, and be able to share that information with you. The Parks and Rec brochure is out. Um, it's printed. It's being mailed to your house. So you can look through all the different activities that are going to be happening. 
uh, through the spring and the summer. Uh, and again, we're just uh, really thrilled to be able to bring everything back to the way it was. See, we have Joe Falcone here uh, from our Parks and Rec Commission who continues to do a great job as well. Um, the one thing I want to talk about today, though, uh, is for our veterans. Uh, and I know a lot of our seniors and our, and our veterans overlap. Uh, I'm, unfortunately, I had to attend a press conference this morning uh, with elected officials up at Castle Point because the federal government has released a report uh, of a realignment, they're calling it, for the VA services across the country. And as part of their realignment, they are proposing closing 17 VA hospitals, Ooh. three of which actually are right here that our, our veterans utilize. Uh, the VA up at Castle Point, the VA in Manhattan, and the VA hospital in Brooklyn. Uh, it is a significant issue. It's a serious issue. Uh, we have, uh, a, obviously, a tremendous amount of concern that this is uh, being thrown at us. Um, there's been no community input at, uh, at this point in time, which really we need community input. There really should be um, a task force going around and trying to understand what the impact's going to be on our veterans. And I know Castle Point's up in Fishkill, but I spent yesterday, uh, and our town clerk was just here, but we spent yesterday over at the VFW Post as part of our St. Patrick's Day uh, celebration and I know a lot of our veterans here in Yorktown they they rely on Castle Point they rely on the services provided to us uh, at Castle Point uh, and to have that taken away from us uh, is completely unacceptable uh, and so we are trying to uh, raise our voices our veterans they fought for our freedom and now it's time for us to fight for them and it's just a terrible uh, proposal I think that is going to have a very very negative impact on the men and women who stepped up and defended our country time and time again. So uh, we're going to provide more information on this. It's only, you know, it's only uh, uh, become public in the last 48 hours, so it's very, very new. Um, you know, what we are hearing is they're starting to already walk back the proposal, understanding the outcry from uh, from members of the public, from the veterans communities, um, and uh, uh, but I just want to make sure that we're clear that the town of Yorktown's position is very simple. Any de any decrease in services will not be tolerated and will not be accepted, period. Uh, we feel very strongly about that. The town board is going to pass a resolution on Tuesday echoing that and, and sending that up to our federal delegation so that they're aware of the fact of our position, so that they understand um, that, you know, that we've, as a community and as a town board, uh, recognize the importance that Castle Point plays in providing critical services uh, to our veterans. And uh, I know Ed Safone's here, one of our veterans, and I'm sure he remembers the fight we had over at Montrose about right. a decade ago. Right. Yeah. Uh, and they have, unfortunately, the federal government has a habit of making these types of proposals where they, uh, frankly, want to monetize the land that these uh, veteran services are on. And, and we fought that uh, against the proposal to turn uh, Montrose into, um, into, into a housing complex. Uh, and we were able to preserve Montrose for our veterans then. Uh, and we're looking to do the same uh, for Castle Point, again, up in, up in Fishkill. Uh, there is talk about... Um, turning it into an outpatient facility, uh, which is fine in some aspects. But I think it's important for people to understand the difference between what Castle Point provides now and if it were to be turned into an outpatient facility, we would actually lose between 10 and 15 services to our veterans that they provide currently. And that's just unacceptable. So uh, this is a, an important issue, something that, um, again, we're going to be working with everybody uh, uh, from county officials, state officials, federal officials on uh, to make sure that, one, uh, community input is, per, is there's, a, there's an opportunity to garner community input, and so our veterans will be able to explain how that's going to impact them. Uh, two, uh, we're going to make sure that we work with them to understand that any diminishment in services is going to be unacceptable. Uh, and, oh, by the way, their, their alternative is uh, to expand services uh, and have our veterans travel to Camden, New Jersey. And if you know where that oh is, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you're, you're taking a hike. And so uh, a very, I think, uh, tone-deaf approach um, that's really going to uh, do a, a great disservice to the men and women who've provided such an incredible service uh, to, our, to our nation. So those are some of the things that we're talking about on a, on a higher level. Um, you know, the town itself continues to hum along really well. Uh, we are in the middle of, of our annual audit. Our, our books get audited every year, so uh, our great finance department is uh, working through that. We expect nothing but high marks, uh, as we've received time and again, because uh, they do a great job. Um, uh, our uh, town hall, I want to just make sure everyone understands, town hall is open. Uh, you're more than welcome to come in 
ask us questions. The clerk's office does a great job uh, providing services. You can come up to the supervisor's office, uh, and we're always happy to provide a helping hand uh, to any of our seniors, or any of our residents in general. Our town board meetings are open to the public. We encourage everyone to come and hear about the different issues that um, we're going to be discussing. Uh, last time I was here, I think we talked about Con Ed and the Con Ed utility bills. Um, there has we got some we got some fist pumps right now. Uh, we made a lot of noise over that, um, a lot of noise. Uh, and uh, Con Ed actually got a lot of pressure from our, our partners on the state level, yeah. uh, and they changed how they did some of their billing for this past month, so people did see quite the reduction uh, in, in their billing. But, you know, we just want to make sure it's not a one-shot, a, a one-time uh, discount in a sense, right? So we're keeping a very, very close eye on that. Uh, one of the things that we are looking to do, and we have a public hearing on Tuesday, uh, we are working with Sustainable Westchester, uh, and Sustainable Westchester uh, basically has a price fix or a price lock program. Uh, and so it would prevent or protect our residents and our small businesses from having those crazy spikes in utility uh, uh, bills that we saw uh, just last month. Uh, and so a lot of uh, municipalities have already implemented this. It seems to be uh, working very, very well. And the town board uh, has already pointed to this as one of the solutions or one of the measures that we can take on the local level to help keep our utility bills uh, at least flat and and help you budget for them. So again, there's no surprises. I'll, I'll never forget being in Jefferson Village with, with Daryl and having some of your neighbors come to me and they're holding bills for 12, 13, 14, $1,500 just for one month, just for one month. And and they're asking, what do, I, what do we do? What do I do? I had one woman, again, I'll never forget her. She says, I won't put the heat on in my house. So I'm living in my, my bedroom and when I go to leave my bedroom, I'm putting on four blankets and a coat. Now, I'm sorry, but that's no quality of life anybody deserves, especially here in the town of Yorktown. And so that's one of the reasons that we've been fighting so hard. I do want to let you know, though, that Con Ed, because again, just keep in mind, uh, Yorktown is one of only two municipalities in Westchester that has both Con Ed and NYSEG, right? So like, I'm a NYSEG customer at my house. Uh, the t you got both. Yeah, some people may have both. Um, uh, the town has both, right? So like town hall is, is nice egg, but if you go to the north side by the library uh, or by the water department, that's Con Ed. So uh, we understand the, the territory. But um, uh, my point being was that Con Ed, for you, if you're a Con Ed customer, they are still proposing an 11% increase on your rates. And so I've already signed up to testify uh, at the Public Service Commission uh, when they have their hearing about, again, this is... To me, unacceptable. They've just finished implementing a three-year rate hike plan, and now they're asking for another 11%. And the kicker for me, though, is uh, I find it simply insulting that Con Ed says they need a rate hike to pay for their property taxes. And if you look at what the reasoning is for their rate hike, it's to pay their property taxes. Now, I'm sorry, but how many residents here are here in the town of Yorktown? All of you, are, are you getting an increase to pay for your property taxes and your Social Security bill and your no, Social Security check every month? No, you're not. So it's, it's really a double tax on our residents. Uh, I think it's wholly unfair uh, and completely tone deaf. Again, uh, with everything going on in the economy, with the inflation as high as it is, all of our, all of our goods costing more, uh, this is not the time for another rate hike. And so the town board has already passed a resolution uh, unanimously calling for uh, the PSC to reject these uh, rate hikes. We've had a petition going already online that's already garnered nearly 1,000 signatures that uh, we're going to be sending up to Albany and to the Public Service Commission, which is the entity that regulates our utilities. Uh, but we're going to keep the fight up. And, um, you know, this is just another issue that while it's being handed down uh, or approved by uh, bureaucrats in Albany, it has a direct impact uh, on all of us here in the town of Yorktown. So, um, but, you know, again, uh, despite the challenges that we're facing, I can't say enough how great it is that we live in a community like the town of Yorktown. It's got so many great things. If you haven't been over to any of our trails since it's starting to get warm out, you, you laugh, but, you know, we've got 40 miles of nature trails here in the town. And, and they're, not, they're not all very uh, challenging. You know, they, they are good places for especially our seniors to go outside and, and enjoy the fresh air and the natural beauty of the town. And if you go up to Granite Knolls, if, if you know where Granite Knolls is, our sports complex on Stony Street, there's actually a paved path that goes around all the fields. Yep. And so it's a great place to, uh, to stretch your legs, enjoy the fresh air. Actually, one of the things that we're working on with uh, Guiding Eyes for the Blind, they have new technology that, they're, that we're partnering with Google on. 
and we can uh, actually paint a line or, or put some tape. It's, it's, we're going to paint a line. Um, and it actually helps the visually impaired walk in a straight line without, without a guide dog. Wow. Uh, so we're working, we're working with uh, folks like Guiding Eyes for the Blind to find new ways uh, to provide uh, new services and, and opportunity in our recreational facilities. We, uh, we're talking about doing another one uh, right outside here at the track uh, for the visually impaired in our community to also uh, be able to go enjoy the, the track here at uh, Veterans Field. But, you know, again, it's just uh, spring's always a good time in Yorktown. Um, I know all the kids are ready to start playing sports again. I know my son signed up. I think he signed up for like three or four sports. So not only knows how many, you know, how many sports we're going to be playing, but we're going to be out there on the soccer fields and the cross fields and the baseball fields. And it's just a great time. So uh, enjoy the town. Enjoy the, the wonderful weather that we're going to be uh, welcoming this spring. Uh, know that we're here for you. If there's any questions or concerns anybody has, you've got a great advisory board that always stay in touch with, uh, with my office. But don't uh, hesitate to reach out directly. Uh, if you have a pen, uh, my number is 962-5722, extension 200. Uh, and anyone in email can always email me, mslater at yorktownny.org. And, you've, of course, you've got uh, Noreen, our fantastic director of our <laughs> Senior Nutrition Center. Uh, she, yeah, please. And she, her and Diana threw a heck of a party uh, yesterday. I know many of you were there. Whoa. I thought that was going to go all night. <laughs> but it was. Uh, but she does a great job, her and the staff, and, and of course, any issues. They're always a great asset as well uh, that, you, that you can use. Uh, but just know that we have a team. We have a great team that continues to work every single day for all of you. Uh, we take great pride in that. We take great pride uh, in keeping our town a beautiful, wonderful town uh, for our seniors and our families and our small businesses. So uh, I just wanted to stop by and say hello and thank the Senior Advisory uh, committee for allowing me to speak for a few minutes and update you on a couple of issues. I don't know if anybody has any questions, but I'm happy to answer if you do. What's happening this weekend? What is happening this weekend? I don't know, Tom, what's happening this weekend? <laughs> oh, thank you. This weekend is Maple Syrup. Uh, this weekend and next weekend is Maple Syrup weekends oh, yeah. here in the town of Yorktown. Right. Thank you, Tom. Yeah. Uh, so believe it or not, here's a fun fact about Yorktown. So Yorktown not only has the most working farms in all of Westchester County, right? But we have the most southern commercial producer of maple syrup in the entire state of New York. It's incredible. And that's White Oak Farm. Yeah, that's White, White Oak Farm right on 129. So, but you don't have to go in. You can come over to the Grange this weekend, and they're going to be selling all the products right there at the Grange. You, there's going to be a wonderful pancake breakfast on Saturday morning and Sunday morning. Uh, so you can come enjoy some pancakes. My kids are excited. They're, they're they're ready to go. I'm bringing them on Saturday morning. I uh, purchased their maple syrup from their place of business. I usually get it from Vermont because my granddaughter's in Vermont, but now I get it here. Yeah, right. shop local, right? Yeah, right, That's right, great. Right. And the other thing that they, they, they do so many things, not only just the syrup, but the honey too. Mm -hmm. uh, and and here's, a, here's a fun fact. If you've got allergies like I do, uh, actually having the natural honey here from our region mm -hmm. is going right. to help you uh, combat some of those, uh, some of those symptoms of your allergies. So... It's delicious honey as well that they produce right here in our backyard. And, and uh, again, so that's this Saturday and Sunday. And next Saturday and Sunday, you can go over to the Grange, oh. which is uh, right off of Mosman, uh, over by St. Pat's. And uh, you, can, you can come over and enjoy a great pancake breakfast. And they're going to have all their products there for you to purchase. So you don't have to worry about going up into the woods, into, into the farm. Yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, it's great. They don't even know you were in the place. Yeah. Yeah, Bry Hart does a great job. He laughs because it's his, uh, it's his second profession. He's already retired once, and he jokes that he works harder now than he did before. So, <laughs> so thanks, Tom, for reminding me about Maple Syrup Weekend. So, Yes? I just got a raise in my optimum. Optimum. $40 a month. Yeah. I am paying $360 a month for cable. I don't have any... Any film channels, I don't get any, I don't get anything. Yeah. It's just basic. We should take a look. We should take a look at your bill. I, I know that uh, my wife and I cut down on our optimum bill because they give you so many things, right? But you don't, you don't even watch them, right? But you're paying for them. So, so it's, uh, we should take a look at your bill, though. If you want to bring it over, I'm happy to take a look at it. And I'm sure Noreen can take a look at it as well. And we can see if there's some ways for you to cut down on, on some of the things that you're paying for that you don't use. But I hear you. Optimum, optimum is very, very pricey. I go on the jewelry channel. That's about it, right? Just the jewelry channel? I, can't, I couldn't tell. I couldn't tell. My, my wife said I can, I can, I can uh, cut 
anything I want, but she needs the Hallmark Channel. Yeah. It's <laughs> the so one thing she said I have to keep. So, that's right. I don't have time to watch TV anymore. So, you know. But uh, any other questions that you might have for me while I'm here? No? Well, again, thank you so thank much you. for having me. Hey, thank you. Thank you to our supervisory committee. And uh, we'll keep up the good work for all of you, okay? Appreciate it. Thank you for letting me speak. Matt, can you give just a quick overview of our memorial services the other day? Sure. So, had, yeah, thank it, you. It is I, and I And, I, for, and my apologies yeah. for not bringing this up. I, I want to thank Jenny and Tony Grasso uh, because they both uh, motivated the town board to hold a very special, we had a prayer vigil uh, for the people of Ukraine. I mean, you all know the terrible things that are happening uh, overseas in Europe, um, and you watch it in the news, and, and it just, it, it, it breaks your heart. It breaks your heart to see. Uh, and, and thanks to Mr. and Mrs. Grasso, they, they motivated the town board. We put a, a great prayer vigil together uh, over at the gazebo in partnership with our Interfaith Council, uh, and it was it, it was spectacular, to be honest with you. So I well it, attended. So well it, yeah, attended. Yeah, we had a, we had about uh, two hundred people. Free, it was it was very cold. cold. <laughs> but you know, listen, that's the thing about Yorktown, right? Uh, yeah. Whenever there's whenever there's a person in need, or whenever there's a crisis, this town always finds a way uh, to to really step up and reach out to those uh, who who are in need. And even though um, Ukraine is is so far away, we collected a ton of donations. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we had our friend Oksana send it over to, uh, to the Ukraine uh, this week. Uh, but really just to provide just a glimmer of hope and unity uh, for the people who are just going through such a terrible time. And it was a, it was a really moving uh, and, and a wonderful ceremony. And again, I really do want to thank you, Jenny, thank and you. thank Tony for, for really motivating us to do that and, and, and reminding us the importance. And, and really, it's, it's if you believe in the power of prayer like I do, you know, there's times in your life where you just you don't know what else to do but pray. Right. But honestly, that's also may be the might be the most important thing you could do. Right. Is it just a, a prayer uh, for those who are struggling or, or for those who are going through such terrible times? And thanks to our interfaith council, we were able to provide that wow. and bring the community together. Uh, and we had people from all over. We that had people was, from that Yonkers that came wonderful. up. It was really uh, great. It was it wonderful. was really great. Um, right. And uh, so yeah, thank you for reminding me about that, thank Jenny. You. I just want them to know that I think it is on our, our government channel. Is We haven't put it on the government channel yet, but we yeah. will. We'll yeah. get it on the government okay. channel. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll work on that this weekend. All right. Thank you so much, All Matt. Right. Thanks, everyone. Stay well. Thank you. Happy spring. I have to look here to introduce you. And now <laughs> we're going to... Finish with the Heart Library. Oh, it's Ellen, right? We're back to the Heart Library. Okay. And My after a, and after Ellen, Ellen gets Brown. finished, excuse me, after Ellen gets finished, have your questions ready for her, and she'll, she and Yvonne will be happy to answer any of your questions because I think it's great, great program. I wasn't aware of what you had. I know, there. wonderful, fantastic. Thank well, you. We'd love to have you all. My name is Ellen Tannenbaum. I'm the head of the Adult Services at the Heart Library. I'm here to accompany Yvonne and to talk a little bit about special programming that we do at the library. Yvonne talked about our ongoing programs, our weekly drop-ins, our museum passes. I'm here to talk about the special events that happen. We have a monthly Sunday concert series that we're very proud to present, um, courtesy of the Friends of the Library. It varies from month to month. Um, this upcoming concert is, called, is performed by Tennessee Walt. He's doing an Outlaws country music show. Um, <laughs> well, there'll be some Merle Haggard, some Johnny Cash, some Chris Christopherson. It'll be a lot of fun. We do ongoing uh, art programs and craft programs at the library for adults. We have a monthly art show. It's set up in our community room. It's done by a local artist. Um, there's a reception for it each month, and it's on display for the entire month. You're welcome to stop by whenever it's convenient to you, walk through and take a look through the community room. We have lectures um, several times a month, all different topics, um, finance, uh, legal things, medical things, it changes month to month depending on whose schedule is free. 
The other thing that we've got is a couple of uh, upcoming Zoom programs. Um, on April the 7th, we have a Zoom being presented by two tour guides who are also college professors who know more information about the 1964-65 World's Fair than I didn't begin to imagine. Um, when I spoke to them initially, we spent a good 35, 40 minutes on the phone with them just popping off stats and fun facts and things. So on April the 7th at 6.30 in the evening, there'll be a Zoom program. You can register on the library website, and I will send you the link to the Zoom, and you're welcome to join us and learn about the World's Fair um, and how it ties to Walt Disney, which I didn't know. Um, also, the first week of April is National Library Week. One of the events that we'll be having is Saturday, April the 9th. We have professional storyteller Robin Beatty coming in. Robin is doing a workshop called Telling Your Life. It's how to tell your own personal stories. I know that many of you in conversation will say, oh, well, I remember what happened at the World's Fair when I was here, when um, I visited um, <coughs> the polo grounds or the first season that the Mets were around or whatever. Um, Robin will teach you how to tell a story, how to develop your listening skills. The program is open to teens and adults of all ages, so it will be an intergenerational program. We're really looking forward to seeing how it's received. Robin will be back to do a second program this summer, um, how to tell uh, folk tales and fairy tales. So we've got that going. On Sunday, April the 10th, we have the Demystifying Medicare workshop. It'll run from 12.30 that Sunday till about 3, 3.30 in the afternoon. They will help you understand the Medicare system a little better than anybody knows right now. They'll be able to answer questions and get you as much um, expert information as they possibly can. Is that, did you say that was December 10th? That's uh, Sunday, April the 10th. Oh, April. Okay. And that's on Zoom? No, that's live in the library. Oh, oh okay. Okay. The last program I want to tell you about that's also live in the library, April is also National Poetry Month. We have a presentation um, by actress Ginger Grace. She's doing Inside Emily Dickinson, her poetry and her life. It will be a full theatrical interactive program. Uh, Ginger becomes Emily Dickinson. I've seen it and it's amazing. Um, it'll be a Sunday afternoon in the library. It'll be 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Again, if you give us a call at the library or go onto our website, you can register for a seat. Um, it's open to all ages, but I imagine that it'll be... Um, more teenagers than adults than it will children. Um, I would imagine it'll probably start at 8 or 10 years old and up, depending on the writing interests of the kids. Um, so with that, I'm going to ask Yvonne to come back up, and we'll tell you a little bit more about us. And Thank you. You can stay here, too. Okay. And this way, if people have questions. We can do we can. questions. Okay. And uh, so thank you to Ellen. She really plans a lot of wonderful programs. One of the things that I heard uh, concerns about from when Supervisor Slater was speaking is the cost, high cost of things like cable. And, and um, that is, we, we hear things like that in the community and we respond with programs. So one of the things that Ellen and I were already talking about as we were hearing that is we need to get a program in the library called Cut the Cord, and that is a way for people to understand how to reduce their cable bills. That's the kind of things we do at the library all the time is we listen to what people need in the community, and then we have speakers come in and create a program around it. So we'll be, we'll be definitely working on that. Uh, so again, the Hart Library is here to serve everyone in town. We have a lot to offer. We've actually only 
done the tip of the iceberg here today. Um, we're always looking to create more services and more features for you. We recently added the lending of mobile uh, Wi-Fi hotspots. So if you're having trouble with your internet at home or if you're going somewhere that doesn't have internet and you would like to have that, you just come to the library and borrow a device that's about, it's about the half the size of a cell phone and all you have to do is plug it in and you have instant internet wherever oh, wow. you are. Oh, okay. So we have five of those devices. We lend them out for two weeks at a time. You just come in and borrow one and you've got internet wherever you go. So that's a brand new thing that we just started about a month or two ago. Uh, so stop in, visit us at the John C. Hart Memorial Library. We're always happy to see you. We also do have volunteer opportunities. If anyone is looking for uh, things to volunteer, or a place to volunteer, we have lots of our friends at the library are always looking for volunteers. They, uh, they provide a lot of um, yeah. funding for our programs, and so they would welcome volunteers. And so I want to thank, uh, thank you all for inviting us here today to speak. And I also want to thank the, the advisory board or committee for all the work you do for the community and the seniors. And I um, hope you enjoy the little goodie bags that we brought. We've got some, uh, some things in there that give you the hours when the library is open. We're open 61 hours a week, every week. Wow. So please make sure you grab one of those bags on the way out, and we're happy to answer any questions you may have. I just want to say I'm so happy that you came because I've lived in this town, I'm not even going to say how long, and I have been to the library. I never knew what all you do. It's absolutely amazing. The especially library with is more than books. Especially yes. with all the new technology that's going on today. I, I think it's fabulous that we can get all the help we can from there. So if we have any questions, if you want to raise your hand and walk up to the mic to ask your question. Ladies, uh, if you want to come up to the mic. She'll just, yeah. she can repeat it. I'll repeat your question. Okay, she'll right. repeat. Well, this says online. I'm not online. Can I just call the library? Absolutely. And you can call the library. If you want to register for any program or anything that we have and you don't, uh, and you don't like to go online or you don't have the, a way to do that, you just call us. Ellen uh, mans the reference desk at the library. She gets calls of every type you can imagine, and we help people constantly because there, there are people who don't go online or there are people who, who maybe can't figure out how to register or something, and we're more than happy to do that for you. So really just give us a call or just drop by. We'll help you with anything you like. And if there's any questions that come to mind after we leave here today, uh, I put my business card in those bags. You can email or call, and we're happy to answer your questions. Are there any other questions for these two lovely ladies here? Well, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Thank you all so much. Very, very Very good. Okay, I'd really like to thank everyone that's here for coming to the meeting today. But I, I can't stress enough if there's anything at all that you would like us to look into or have a speaker here for, please let us know. And we'll do our best, you know, to take care of that. And uh, that's about it for now, uh, unless we have more questions from the audience here. Oh, I'm sorry, Marina. She left us for a little bit because she was checking on a program for us. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Um, Noreen gave me this. It's from the high school, uh, Yorktown High. It's from um, Emily Kluger. She is the dance and teacher in all. So this is a flyer I will read to you. You're invited to the Yorktown High School Band 13th Annual Swing Dance Concert. It will be on Saturday, April 23rd, 2022. Okay, um, it's a swing dance concert, Yorktown High. Professional dance lessons, and they give you the time from 7 to 8 p.m. Live music and dancing, 8 to 10.30 p.m. Or sit back, enjoy some live music, and support our music students. 
fun family events, all ages welcome. Swing attire, encouraged. Dance lessons by Kelly and Tank from the Dance Conservatory. Now they're going to have best dress contest, door prizes, $15 adults, $10 student and seniors. Now I, I left to call the high school to find out if our esteem passes would be able to use. All right. I was not able to get the answer because lunchtime, this one's not there. But I am going to, they're going to call me at home and they're going to leave me the answer. I did speak to Dr. Hatta in the beginning of the school year because I knew this was very important to us. And at that point in time, he had not made a decision because of the covert still the way it was. So if you're interested, we will get the information to you some way. We'll get it. We'll get it to you. I will have it hopefully when I go home. Well, it'll and definitely be put on the government channel. We'll de definitely put it on the government yeah, channel. Yeah, and we'll see if they And could. also on our website, we'll see if we can speak to someone to put it on our website. Uh, but keep the date, in, right. and just keep the date, it's April 23rd, it's a Saturday, okay? And then we'll be able to get you the uh, information as to whether it will be free, providing you have the esteemed little plastic thingamajiggy, okay? Thank you. All Thank right, you. and uh, before we say goodbye for the day and see you next month, again, I want to remind you about what Chief Noble said. No mail in your mailbox, no keys in your car. You know, you pass a mailbox with a post office or whatever, put it in the, ma you know, the mailbox there. Don't put it in your mailbox at home. We have enough problems going on. We don't need, like uh, Yvonne said, her check was washed and uh, it's taken all. And from $30, it went up to thousands of dollars that they did to her check. And these are just a few things. So remind your friends and neighbors that we are on TV and we give you a lot of pointers on the TV that are very, very helpful. And again, I say if there's anything you want us to bring up or talk about, see me after the meeting and we'll make a note. I see yeah. uh, someone has a hand out there. Chief Noble also suggested that all of us put police phone number in the Absolutely, and I want to also tell you about that. Put the police number the very first one on your phone. What I did with mine, I put an A in front of it, so it's on the beginning of the alphabet. And if you have somebody that starts with an A, spell his name with a different letter. But I, I just want to tell you from experience, when I had to call the police, to, and I know the number, when I had to call the police department, I did not know it. I did not know it. And you know what? Minutes and second counts. If you're calling from your cell phone, you call the police department. Don't call 911, because that takes time. They go from 911 to the police. Call the police department mm -hmm. directly. If you're a senior or anybody, and this is where we had an incident happen, if you, you know, I hate to take up your time to tell you all these things, but they're so important. If you fall down on the ice, you bang your head, mm -hmm. you might not think you're okay, you might think you're okay, but you're not. The first thing the doctors have told, especially seniors, go to the emergency room and have that checked out. You could be bleeding there, anything, and it doesn't show up right away. It shows up later on. So there are so many important things and little things that we talk about at these meetings, and I think it's really important for you. We're trying to get, communication is the biggest problem we have in life for everything. And we have it with the town board, we have it with, with everything. So we're trying to tell, our, especially our seniors, Turn the channel on every once in a while. Listen not only to our program, but to other programs. They're very, very helpful to you. And I thank you again for coming. Do we have any more? When, when's your next meeting? Our next meeting is April 22nd. Hope, and we just got a confirmation. I know, but the, the 15th was a date that we weren't going to have it. It's going to be on the 22nd, and we will be having it at Town Hall. And we'll have one? Right. And we are some of the things that we're planning so you can 
some of the things that we're planning, and it's just talking about it right now. Rosemary's not here, so you know we talk about a lot of things, and we have to really get cleared from her. We're thinking of a wellness uh, fair again, like we had last year, the year previous. I don't think we had it last year because of COVID. We felt that that was, but that's only in the crawling stages right now, and we're thinking about having that in the fall. Uh, so keep that in mind. If there's any ideas or things you might want to have, write us a note. We will put the comment box out again, and that way you could just drop a card in there and put that in there. Okay? Any other? One final thing. I think Jenny just touched on it, though. If you have anything that you would like to speak about that you think we might be able to help you with, don't hesitate to come and say, you know, this and this, whatever this and this is. We had that in the beginning when we first started. People would come to us with different little problems that they felt would, maybe we could help them with. And we did look into some of them, okay? So if you have something that you want us to look at that we can help you with, you know, maybe these ladies yeah. are a barrel of knowledge. They know everything. They truly do. They, they work hard. Um, just don't hesitate to come and ask. And no question or request is considered silly. Yeah. And, okay. and just remember this is your, we're here yeah, for you. representing you, for you, but this is your meeting to come to us. Maybe we can help you, maybe we can, and we'll let you know that. As you can see, our supervisor is always available to us. If we want anybody else from the town to come and speak to us about anything else you have a problem with, they'd be more than happy to come and speak to us. So I can't stress enough, we're just a group of senior citizens trying to put the message across and try to help you. Thank you so much.